there is a this quadratic function y of x that is given to be ax squared minus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants. We are told that this function has a value of 41 when x is minus 2, and a value of 20 when y, or rather when x, is 5. We're also told that the minimum value of this function happens when x equals 2. Now, we call this value d in the problem, and the problem asks us to find a, b, c, and d. So again, a, b, and c are the constants in the function, and d is the minimum value, which happens at x equals 2. To solve this, the first step is to substitute x with the values that we have. And our goal is to find the values of a, b, c, and d. And those are four variables, four unknowns, and we need four equations. But if we focus on this given here, we only have three variables. So we only need three equations. And what we have here are the following. We use this given, 41 equals y of minus two. Now we replace all x's with minus two. This is what we get. We do the same thing for this given, 20 equals y of five. We replace the x's with five, and this is what we get. But notice that we have a, b, and c, and we only have two equations, but three unknowns. So we need one more equation that relates a and b. And why do we need it to relate a and b, it's because we can get rid of c here. Notice that if we subtract 41 minus 20, we get 21, 4a minus 25a minus 21a, 2b minus 5b minus, mi minus negative 5b, you get 7b, and c minus c is just zero. So we got rid of c, and now we're left with an equation that is in terms of a and b. And so we just need one more equation that relates a and b. Also notice that we were able to reduce this into this by dividing both sides by seven. Now, let's think about how we get the other equation. For any quadratic function, it can be expressed in the following in the following form, ax squared plus bx plus c. Here we use the lowercase a, b, and c to distinguish it from the constants in the problem. So this one is the general case. That means this is not confined to this specific problem. This is for the general case of any quadratic function. Notice that the difference is that here we have a plus in the general case, and in the given, we have a minus b. Now that is important because what we know about this general quadratic function is that you can write it in this form here. And why we write it in this form is because if we write it in this form, we can easily see the minimum value or the maximum value. In fact, this is gonna be our minimum or maximum value. In the problem, we have a minimum value. And then this term here, is the x, the value of x, where the minimum or the maximum happens. And this a here tells us whether we have a minimum or a maximum. If it's greater than zero, we have a minimum. If it's less than zero, we have a maximum. And so this is a useful form. And in fact, if we write our given in this form, we can obtain another equation our third equation. In particular, we know that from this given that the minimum value is when x equals two. And we already said that in fact, this here is that x, right? This is the x when the minimum value happens. And so we can equate this to two. And our b here, just notice that our b here would have to be negative uppercase b, okay? Notice that. Again, that's because here we have a plus and in our given, we have a minus, okay? So uh, because this is a minus and it's a plus, 
in the general form, we have to add that minus that that minus sign in here. Okay, so our lowercase b is minus the uppercase b. For a, it's just the same as the given, and the lowercase c is just the same as the given. Now we just replace this lowercase b here with our minus b, and so we just get a b, and the a here, we just replace it with the uppercase a that we have, and we have this two, this is from the given, x equals two equals b over two a. And if we move a to the other side, we get this, b equals four a. And this is our third equation. And now we can go back here, okay, and replace this b here with four a. So we do that here, three equals minus three a plus b, replaces b with four a, and voila, we get a equals three. So we now have a value for a. And to get the value for v for b, we just have to replace the a here. Okay, so we already know that a here is three. So we replace this a with three. And, or actually, uh, it will be easier to use this. They're, they're gonna give you the same results, but uh, this one looks easier to use because you only multiply one. So four times three, Four times three is 12, and so B is 12. Now we're left with C. So how are we gonna find C? So we use a previous equation. We can use either this one on top or this one at the bottom, but I'm gonna choose this one on top because the numbers are smaller. So the computation would be easier. So that equation was 41 equals 4A plus 2B plus C. But we already know A to be three, we already know B to be 12, so we replace them. And we get 36 plus C on this side. We get 41 on the other side. And so finally, we get C equals 5. Now we have A, B, and C. We're left with D. And D is, in fact, the maximum value. But we already said that if we write it this way, this is going to be the rather the minimum value. So maximum or minimum value. In our problem, we have a minimum value. So this is going to be our D. This is going to be our minimum value. And we already have A, B, and C. And so this is going to be easy. We just replace A with 3, B with 12, and C with 5. So that's, uh, that's going to give us this, this part here, here at the bottom. So we replace A with 3, C with 5, and B with 12. And you do that computation, you get minus 7. So D is minus 7. However, you can also just use the, the function that we already know. So because we already have A and B, we will know what to put in this part. We already know A, we already know B, and we'll, we also know that this is going to be Y of 2 in here, right? And and we also we also know C, right? So we replace A, B, and C and X with two. And when you compute that, you do it this way, okay, you're still gonna get negative seven.